Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. The thing that kind of bothers me with Kamora Lee is the fact that I remember, well, even before I go there, there was two things that she said in that video. To me, that was exceptionally messy. And I want to play you guys those two clips. Hold on. So I'm going to play you guys the first clip, and then we're going to listen. I also timestamped the other one. Okay, I got them both up. Okay. So let me, let's play the first clip. Because to me, Kamora was definitely being extra, extra messy. All right, so we're going to listen to this first one. And this is where she's basically hinting to him being into men and being bisexual. It's behavior that you'll actually see from a lot of guys in the industry, from a lot of friends of, they all stick together. A lot of their peers, a lot of my friends have been kind of oppressed and pushed back and silenced and teased, you know, made fun of. They get into new relationships and the person starts to dog the other person. I'm talking publicly, you guys. We've gone through so much. But we don't do that to your many women or, or, me, or, I, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> it's behavior that. Okay, y'all peep that. To your many women or, but she caught herself and you hear the lady in the background laughing. Very messy. There's been rumors about Russell taking it every which way for years. If you guys remember back in the day, uh, before he died, Pimp C was calling out Russell, you know, called him a, you know, a peen in the booty and a few other people. And then, you know, when he does yoga on top of men's legs, I always found that strange. You know, he'll have, he'll be on top of like two feet and just, I, I don't know, just whatever, Russell. So this is nothing really new. We've been hearing about that, but I thought it was very messy for her to try and put that out there during this whole situation. Another thing I found very messy was this. We're going to talk about this as well. Now she wants to talk about, you know, how she got with Russell when she was young and she was 15 and, you know, uh, you know, basically alleging to like grooming and, and her being in high school. This is very interesting. And we'll talk about why that's very interesting for a lot of y'all who are young. 16 years old, like. I've known you and everybody knows, again, that's documented. You can see, um, I believe I was maybe a sophomore. I know it was before junior prom and senior prom because I went to both of those proms alone with my friends when I was dating them. So it was definitely long before junior and senior prom. I think it was around sophomore year of high school. And again, everybody knows this in my life. You know, they know they I was walking around, they see me. The point of it is I've known you a long time and I've seen lots of stuff and I just choose to not go there. Um, lots of things that I could say over the time. You know, I'm typically the one that he and others would call to have their back, right? I'm the, I'm the one that they would call to um, solidify. Okay, so let me come back on the screen. My issue with that situation, with her bringing that up now is this. For years, I've been talking about Russell getting with Kamora Lee for years on this channel. And not just me, other people. I've said this for a long time. I, remember, I even found the old clip. I had to go searching for this old clip of Tyra Banks. If you guys go back and watch any of my Russell Simmons videos, I talked about this. There's an old clip of, of Tyra Banks where she's saying that Russell was like a dirty old man and he was trying to get with Kamora and she was so young and it was weird because he was in his 30s and she was a teenager and he was definitely grooming her. But again, when people brought this up in the 90s and the 2000s, everything was sanctioned and co-signed by her own parents, by her mother. Her mother was cool with it. Why? Because a lot of times back then, this is conversations folks ain't ready for. 
a lot of times back in like the 90s and the 80s, like, you know, back in the day, you did have older men go after young women. This is a tale as old as time. Like I've told you guys this before. It's only more of a controversy now because of the Me Too movement and social media. A lot of y'all's grandpas and, and grandmothers are literally 10 plus years apart, okay? I believe one of the things, because they said her mom was okay with the relationship, because so many times if women are living, you know, in more poverty stricken areas or they don't have money and you have this rich suitor, right? Because Russell Simmons was already well established at 35 years old and you have this grown man and he, you know, wants to be with your daughter and, you know, she's going to live a life that you can never even imagine living. A lot of parents will technically sell their kids off. They don't say it that way, but that's how it's looked at. Like this man can provide a better life for my young daughter than I can. And guess what? She was provided that life. Even though, yeah, it, you can call it grooming and he got with her really young. But at the end of the day, she lived a life that her parents would have never been able to provide for her. He put money into her business. He helped her start baby fat and everything else. Then she was even crying, talking about, you know, I was so young when I had my kids. I was so young. And I'm thinking, well, did, was she a teen mom? Like, I had to go back and Google. She was 25 years old. I just feel like, I guess for me, I feel like she's doing this to garner even more sympathy. And it's hard for me to garner more sympathy for her because, again, for years, when people would call out this romance, y'all would be cussing out the internet. Same with Misa and Diddy. Y'all be going off on the fans and y'all don't know nothing. Y'all need to shut up. Y'all are bringing up old stuff. They would always go off on folks, you know what I'm saying, bringing this up. So why is it an issue now? That's, that's my thing. It's like you're trying to add sauce to the fire when we already know this. We know that he being got with you when you were in high school. This is nothing new. This has been spoken about and you was cool with it. You acted like it was no big deal. So why are you now teary eyed? and trying to add extra salt and extra sauce to what we already knew and what we've been calling out for years, okay? Again, is it okay for him to have been 35 getting with somebody in high school? Absolutely not. What I'm saying is that back then, it was a lot more acceptable, unfortunately. It, that's just what it was. There's stories of Aerosmith getting with the 14-year-old teenager, Elvis Presley and his 14-year-old. That's just what it was in those days, right? Now, not so much. It still happens now, but it's going to be a lot more low key. Back then, they were able to floss it. Okay. Jay Z uh, was messing with young ass Foxy Brown when she was 15, 16. Y'all not ready for that conversation. You know, so th this was nothing new. So when I see her trying to bring that up now, it's like side eye. Because again, and then she's saying she was technically always the cleanup woman and this and that. I also remember back in 2018 when the allegations first came out and a lot of people were calling out Russell Simmons and so many people in especially the black and hip hop community were coming to his defense. Even when Oprah wanted to make, you know, be an executive producer on the film about Russell and all his allegations, she was attacked so bad by the community that she dropped out of it and she let whoever picked it pick it up. But if you guys remember this was Kamora Lee just a few years ago. Let me make this bigger. Kamora Lee defends Russell Simmons. These allegations against him are not are nothing like the person I've known. Okay? This is what she wrote. I add my voice to the chorus of those speaking out against harassment and violence in all forms. I have known Russell for 25 years. We were close friends, married, divorced, and we have remained friends, co-parents, and partners through it all. These allegations against him are nothing like the person I've known in all that time. I've known him to be a caring, supportive father and someone who has worked timelessly, excuse me, tirelessly to uplift the uh, disenfranchised communities. This is a pivotal moment in which men are being held accountable for their abuse of power and degenerative behavior towards women in all spheres. As a mother of two daughters, I believe that no one should ever be shamed or portrayed 
as an unreliable witness to their own experience for speaking up, nor should anyone be condemned legally without due process and a fair trial. My sincere hope is that anyone faced with harassment or assault reports to their organizational law enforcement. Though I understand that in many cases this may not be possible, I remain committed to always fighting injustice and inequality in all forms. God bless. Now I have to put my baby down. So that's what she wrote a few years ago. Also, let's not forget that when Jordan Woods was going through her situation with uh, Tristan, y'all not like to keep my bangs out my face, so sorry if I'm brushing my hair. When she was going through her situation with Tristan, remember Jordan Woods was young. I think she was like maybe 20, 21. Tristan is a grown man, way older. Um, she had no problem going online, blasting Jordan Woods, you know, dragging her with Kim Kardashian on this show. She had a lot to say about Jordan Woods, almost making it look like she's a fast little girl. She didn't say that, but that's the energy she was giving. And so for me, I find it very interesting that now there's all these tears. Now she wants to talk about allegations. Now she's saying, well, I'm here in America and I'm willing to face, you know, whatever I'm going through. He's the one who ran to Bali. I didn't run out the country. Well, he ran out the country in 2018 and you didn't have anything to say about it. You know, so I guess for me, my issue is the fact that she has all this energy all of a sudden, you know, with Russell and wanting to blast him, but she didn't have all this energy before when folks were calling him out, when folks were asking her to speak out on this situation. Obviously, you know, he has issues the women who are speaking and leveling these allegations against him, everything can't be a lie. And let's not forget that he got with you at the tender age of 15. And that was never an issue in the past. But now all of a sudden she wants to bring that up. Why? All of a sudden now she wants to talk about him running to Bali um, to hide from these allegations. Why? So I feel like now she's really trying to, she's trying hard to sully his name. So to me, in my personal opinion, her commentary, her crying on camera came off as disingenuous. It came off as trying to ruin him because he is trying to make her look bad. Her ex-husband, um, what's his name? Lesnar, Tim Lesnar, the one who got charged with bank fraud. He's looking at like all types of, I think like 25 plus years in prison. And Russell has been blasting her and the ex-husband. And I think she's using this as a get back moment. Now, when Aoki was crying and upset, to me, that was very genuine. That was a young girl who was very hurt and who was at her wit's end. So I don't, I don't look at Kimora's situation and Aoki's situation the same. Because for years, she defended this man, made excuses for this man, ignored the allegations, and now you want to bring it up like it's all new information. You had no problem when people would say things about the age difference. Everybody's reaching. Folks need to get over it. That was so long ago. It's all good. My mom was cool with it. Now you're crying and saying that you were in high school and acting like, you know, he just stole all of your youth, which he did. But why cry about it now? When people have been bringing, up this, bringing this up to her for years. So I find it very disingenuous. That's what I'll say. Because again, this is the same woman who had no problem attacking Jordan Woods and going in on Jordan Woods and standing behind men when they're doing things bad. But now that these same men, you know, are doing things bad to her daughters, now she wants to speak up. Now she wants to fully blast him. And I think the whole situation is sad because again, nobody wins when the family feuds, right? And I feel like. Aoki is in the middle. She lives with her mom. That's who's raising her. But she has a lot of love for her dad as well. And the fact that he's trying to involve her in a lawsuit that has nothing to do with her and her sister. If he's upset about the money that was lost, take it up with your ex-wife. And the thing is, in a court of law, they were found not to be, you know, culpable. She was found not guilty. And he was ordered to pay her 100K. So obviously the evidence is not there. 
And then, you know, the daughter is saying that, you know, he has dementia or, you know, he's having all types of issues, you know, psychological issues. I don't know because I'm no doctor. But I think the entire situation is, is extremely messy. I do think the entire situation is really unfortunate. It was just weird to see them trending and weird to see Kimura like literally blasting him because that's never been their MO. They've always kept things hush hush and stuff like that. And um, again, I think Russell has a lot of issues. Like I said, I've been calling him out for years. I think he hides behind this yoga facade and this old peace and namaste and all this bullshit. Some of them people are the most treacherous people behind the scenes. When everything is all oh, peace and love and, you know, oh, just yoga. And I'm not buying any of that stuff. And if you really know the truth behind yoga and some of those yoga poses and how, you know, yoga, yoga has a very, uh, very spiritual, even sometimes demonic essence to it. If you really understand yoga and those different poses and, and how some of that stuff allows spirits to come into you. So he has a lot of weird energy around him. I'm not a fan, but I'm also, I also see through a lot of the nonsense. Somebody said T hush. No, I'm just keeping it real. If you really dig into what yoga really is about, you will be frightened. It goes very, very deep. It's not just the, it, it goes deep. I'm not about to go there, but um, you have to do your own research on it. It goes very deep. I, I got sick. I, I physically got sick and I almost ended up in the hospital the first time I ever tried yoga because I'm that spiritually sensitive. So you just have to be careful with some of these um you know, some of these practices, because there's a lot of deities involved. So when he's pushing that and just, I, I know what I went through when I tried it. It's, 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 very, it's a very spiritual practice and all of it is not good spirituality. So yeah, I, I don't, yeah. Y'all want me to do a deep dive on it? Maybe, I'll see. But yeah, I just, I, yeah, it's, it's all new age. I, I don't trust anything that, that Russell's on. I think he's full of crap. I, I think a lot of these women have been victimized by him. Um, he puts on a certain facade. I just, I don't buy it. And one thing I've noticed with a lot of these men, um, I mean, y'all can get mad all you want. If you practice yoga, that's your business. I didn't say don't go to your yoga class on Tuesday. I didn't call you a demon. I didn't say any of that. I said, there's some deeper things to yoga. If you want to research it, research it yourself. Why do y'all cry? Did I call you a demonic yoga practitioner? No, I didn't. If you're going to yoga tonight, enjoy. Yoga is not for me. I know what I went through spiritually when I tried it and I would never try yoga again. Why do y'all get mad about my personal experiences? It's not demonic. I do yoga every night. God bless you. I tried it once. It's not for me. That's it. That's all. But anyways, um, and another thing I also noticed with some of these men in the industry who had no problem abusing women, young girls, and you can say, oh, it was in their younger days and, oh, that's how it was in the 90s, whatever. What I noticed is that a lot of them try to change their ways and clean up their act once they have daughters, once their daughters are of age. Then it's like, oh, because you know damn well neither one of them would allow a grown man in their 30s to have dated their daughters at 15. You, you know, that wouldn't even been an option. So that's why I always find it really interesting how like a lot of these celebrity dads want to be extra, you know, uh, protective of their daughters, like the game. Oh, that's my daughter. Anybody coming at her, I got a shotgun for them. Really? Well, what about you finger fucking that little girl, India, when she was underage in the park? Oh, so it's not okay for somebody to treat your child that way. But you have no problem treating somebody else's child that way. That's why I don't respect about a lot of these celebrity men. As they get older and their daughters get older, now they want to act super protective and, you know, oh, uh, only a certain person. I got, I got to vet anybody trying to talk to my daughter. Oh, but you were grown knocking up 16, 17-year-olds. Interesting. But now your, your daughter is 
you know, your daughter's above reproach. So I think a lot of these industry guys are full of crap. It's the hypocrisy for me that somehow their daughter's cooch is more sacred than another man's daughter. They had no, no problem disrespecting another man's daughter, running behind another man's child at a young age and disrespecting them. But then like T.I., he wants to check his daughter's hymen, but doesn't care if his, if his own son is out here crushing somebody else's daughter's hymen. So it, it's, it's, that's just the thing I just don't respect. Um, yeah, India Westbrook, that was her name. Y'all forgot about that. I mean, that picture, that was viral. And then he was sniffing his finger and all types of weird shit. And then it's just funny now to see how like he's going off on social media every other day about his child. It's like, sir, shut the fuck up. Cause you didn't care about anybody else's daughter, you know? So my thing is, you never know what you'll have in the future, sons, daughters, you know, both. Respect other people's children. Respect the same way that you want your child treated, that's how you should treat other women. So I always find that very interesting when men are very protective of their daughters and their mothers and their sisters, but then dog out women on the street, dog out the average woman. But you know, anybody disrespect my mom, I got, I got a bullet for that ass. Fuck your mom. You don't respect anybody else's mother. I feel no ways. That's just keeping it real. Somebody said the chat disappeared. Refresh, because I still see the chat. Yes, have compassion. And that's the one thing I hate is that how, you know, even when I was saying that on Instagram, that I find it very funny how even with some of the female celebrities, how they try and like, I think, uh, what's her name? Carisha was talking about how you know, she likes selling pussy and, you know, she's living the best life and this and that. Look at her lifestyle. And I'm just like, I just hope she keeps that same energy when her daughter comes of age because they like to perpetuate stuff to other people's daughters and make it look like, you know, it's cool to be a city girl. It's cool to be out here, you know, smashing and, and going from man to man and, you know, fucking for bags. But then in the same breath, they'll, they'll make sure their own children are sheltered. Matter of fact, Rod Wave said it best, and he caught a lot of uh, flack for it. When he said, Jeezy told us to sell rocks and sell cocaine and, and to move weight. But he sent his son to private school and then college. So why, why perpetuate all the nonsense on regular people, but then make sure that your children are going to the best private schools and have the best tutors, and you're not encouraging your own children to be out there selling drugs, but it's okay for regular people's children. You don't want your daughter out there getting fucked by Diddy, but it's okay for you to fuck another regular man's daughter at 15. Just saying. So, yeah, so for me, um, I feel no ways anymore about Kimora. I think Kimora is just trying to add extra sauce to the situation because she's upset. Um, but Aoki, her her tears and her, her being upset, I don't think they should have bought it to the internet, but... I have a soft spot for her because that young girl is never involved in any type of drama and she's done nothing but try to make her parents proud. And that, you know, both both Ming and Aoki, like I said, I'm not a fan of either parent like that, but I'm never going to take away from the fact that both of them, no matter how weird the relationship was when they got together, they did a damn good job on raising those little girls. They really did. I mean, both of them are beautiful, smart, articulate, carry themselves well, you know, so they did do a good job. I will never take that away from Russell or Kimora, but Kimora, she's being messy. You're talking about the man being bisexual all of a sudden. Well, you weren't worried about it when you was with them for all them years and married to him. Why bring it up now? People been talking about him being bi. Why didn't you come out back then when, um, when uh, Pim C was calling him out? He was quiet. So it seems like people are willing to put up with stuff when the gravy train, chugga, 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 choo, choo. When that gravy trains are rolling, people will accept anything. They'll deal with it. They're cool with it. But now that he's going broke, remember they both was calling him broke. The daughter said he was broke. Kamora said he's broke. Now that he's broke, all of a sudden now, oh, well, 
now, you know, we can just spill all the tea, put all the business out there because he's broke. But when they were raking in the benefits, the money, the, the spousal support, the child support, all those secrets were kept in house. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. Her moves. And again, I also had to side eye her too, because this is not the only father that she's had issues with. Remember in 2019, uh, her black son, uh, the actor, Hansu, remember he came out and said that Kamora doesn't let him see the little boy. Let me see if I remember this. And, and you know what's so funny? I don't know if y'all put this together. That was uh, Father's Day of 2019 when he came out. Let me see if I can find the article. It's like De Dijamon. I was mispronouncing the name. Here it is. This was on Father's Day of 2019. Who remembers this? That's why I said, you know, I, I can't just have all this extra sympathy for her because there's some there's some things going on with Kamora as well. Y'all don't forget shit. Remember, this was Father's Day of 2019. They just happened to run into uh, Dijaman Hansu. He says, crappy Father's Day. I haven't seen my son in forever. How you doing? How was your Father's Day? Excuse me, excuse me. How was your father's day? It would have been nice to see my son for Father's Day. It would have also been nice uh, if I could see him to at least talk to him, right? Well, when, that, all fathers, right? when was the last time that you saw your kid? Yes, I don't want to play it out. You know, TMZ be copywriting stuff. And he had posted this picture on Father's Day. Um, Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. But he hadn't seen this boy in years. So I just find it very ironic, you know. Not trying to be all conspiracy theory, uh, theory, but I find it very ironic that in 2019, the black child, you know, his daddy was saying, I haven't seen my son in years. She won't even let me talk to him. Then we moved to Father's Day 2023, and it's all this drama with this other baby daddy. And then the white child that she has, that father is, you know, he's locked up right now. So, you know, he can't really say anything. So yeah, I just I just find it very yeah, she got several baby daddies. Again, she's only people don't people don't she don't get as much backlash for having, you know, I think what she has like three baby dads, different races, because she's a model and she's very pretty. So she doesn't get backlash. Just like the Kardashians. They're all baby mamas, most of them. You know, Kim was married to to Kanye. Courtney you know, was a baby mama for years, but they never get that. But yeah, she got three baby daddies. But yeah, nobody ever says that. So I just, I don't know, I just find that very interesting that this is a second Father's Day drama surrounding Kamora Lee. I don't know if anybody peeped that, but I thought about that after I had edited the video. Like this is the second time that she's had baby daddy issues. And I don't know if he's seen his son you know, if he sees him regular now, because like I said, that was in 2019. But I remember she never really addressed it. It was kind of just swept under the rug. So, yeah, that whole situation with Kimora, it's very interesting. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.